Hello and welcome to Newsbreak at 7. I'm Veera Raghav. To our special focus this evening, the disturbing case of a school teacher in Uttar Pradesh's Muzaffar Nagar, who ordered that an eight-year-old child in the second standard be humiliated and slapped in public by all the other children in the class as punishment for not doing his homework. The video of that young Muslim boy being slapped repeatedly as the teacher Tripta Tripathi asks his classmates to slap him one by one had gone viral on social media handles leading to widespread outrage from several quarters. Some of the comments made by the teacher as she ordered other children to slap the boy were seemingly communally offensive. However, the teacher has clarified and claimed that she had no communal intentions at all and that her only aim was to ensure that the boy and all other kids take their homework seriously. The child's parents have filed a complaint and say the traumatized child is not able to sleep. But the teacher is still free. Should such teachers be taught a lesson? Some serious questions there. And we have a special panel of guests to take those questions to. But before that, let's play for you an explanation given by the teacher in a social media post. NDTV Sharad Sharma also spoke to the child's father. I want to clear my hand and say that the day that the child didn't do the work, so my goal was to remember that the child would remember the child to remember. और मैं वैसे भी विकलांगू और मेरे से उठा नहीं जा रहा था उस दिन तो मैंने दो दो चार बच्चों से कह दिया कि तुम ही इसको एक दो लगा दो ये जो है ना करने लगेगा काम बस मेरा तो ये मकसद था और मैं ये नहीं चाहती कि ये और इन्होंने जो है ये वीडियो काट काट के और अलग से बना के हिंदू मुस्लिम कराने के लिए इन्होंने जो है ये वायरल कर दी जबकि मेरा तो कोई आशय नहीं था और मैं तो हाथ जोड़ के अब भी ये ये कह रही हूँ कि मेरे से गलती है मैं जो हूँ बहुत सारे बच्चों को जो मोमडन बच्चे हैं जिनके बस की फीस देनी नहीं है तो वो आते हैं तो मैं उनको फ्री पढ़ाती हूँ कोई ऐसा मकसद नहीं था कि मैं मोमडन बच्चों को अलग से प्रताड़ना दूँ या कोई अलग से वो करूँ ये तो बनाया गया है सारा सब उनकी बनाई हुई करी तरी सब की है लेकिन मैं तो आज जोड़ के अब भी ये कहती हूँ कि मेरा कोई ऐसा मकसद नहीं था और आज तक मैं इतने दिन से पढ़ा रही हूँ कोई मेरा मकसद नहीं था ऐसा ये बताइए कि अभी बच्चे की स्थिति कैसी है क्या वो जो मानसिक प्रताड़ना झेली उसने उससे बाहर निकल आया है हाँ अब वो कुछ नॉर्मल है ठीक है कल बता रहे थे कुछ तबीयत वगैरह खराब हुई थी उसकी दो दिन से खाना नहीं खाया था वैसी बैकी बैकी बातें करी उसने अच्छा वो अब उस मॉल वैसा दिखाया एकांत में रखा हाँ। तो अब उसकी तबीयत ठीक है हाँ वैसी जो कानूनी कार्रवाई है इसमें जो भी है वो होनी चाहिए इसमें जो बच्चे को पिटवाया है उस, उस, उस मामले में आप चाहते हैं टीचर पे कार्रवाई बस टीचर पे कार्रवाई हो अच्छा हमारा किसी से और कोई वो नहीं कोई शिकायत नहीं है it may take a long time before the trauma that that child has experienced, uh, he recovers from it. Obviously, the teacher giving her explanation as well. Leaving the communal connotations aside, despite warnings, guidelines and laws, many young children continue to get hit or shamed as punishment in several of our schools. Why are we not taking stern action in these cases? Is it just a social sanction that it's okay? Should teachers be taught a lesson in general? And this is not to punish them, but to create awareness. Joining us this evening, Dr. Vikram Singh, former DGP of Uttar Pradesh, Nurain Fazal, founder and managing trustee at the Inventure Academy, and child psychologist, Aarti Rajaratnam, who joins us from New Delhi. But first to you, Dr. Singh, not as a measure of punishment. we we'll leave the crime and punishment aspect aside. To send out a strong message that corporal punishment is not okay, children cannot be punished in such manners, should action be taken. Absolutely, I have no doubt in my mind, and I represent the generation when it was said, spare the rod and spoil the child, and the good schooling had three ingredients, caning, cold bath and bad food. Today, all of this is punishable today, and no teacher should get away by inflicting this kind of a mental and physical torture on the child. This nightmare, I can tell you, let us go back in our lives, if there was an unfair, unkind teacher, a cruel teacher, that nightmare has stayed with me, and I'm 70 years plus, and I also take the guarantee that anybody who has suffered a bad and a disbalanced eccentric teacher, that nightmare is not going to go away. Therefore, 
My strong recommendation would be not only under the IPC of 323.504 IPC, but 17.1 of also the protection of uh, uh, the Act in the Right to of Education Act. Also, as also the departmental rules have to be invoked and the district inspector of schools would do well to ensure that such teachers are not unleashed on the trusting students anywhere in the world. Including the Juvenile Justice Act as well, which prescribes punishment in such cases of uh, uh, child, I mean, should be considered as a case of child abuse, physical abuse at yes. some level. Uh, Dr. Singh, before I go to the other panelists, very quick. Yes, just before I go to the other panelists, uh, quickly, I want to understand from a policeman's point of view, uh, you know, you see bulldozer justice in some parts. Is this treated as a case of seriousness at police stations at the local level? We're not talking about one case that's gone viral in social media. We're talking of perhaps several such cases that just go unnoticed. Your straight question deserves a straight answer. In the priority of the police, this goes not even in the top 20. The VIP security, property offenses, the cyber crime, and this kind of child abuse would not even come to light, but for the fact that it got the notice from the media. Otherwise, it would have gone away and swept underneath the carpet. Now the action. In this case also, the Muzaffar police refused to lodge an FIR. They said, we do not have a complainant. The police recover a dead body riddled with bullets. They don't wait for the complainant. They re register a case against the murder against the unknown and proceed with the investigation. In this case, they did not even take pains to register a case. What to talk of proceeding with the investigation. Mm. Important point that you make there and thanks for that straight answer, uh, straightforward answer coming from a former top cock. Nurain Fazal, is there a social sanction? Well, we may talk about social strata, economic class, but overall, is there a social sanction to say, well, this is okay? And what do we do to make sure that this is not okay? I think what happened was absolutely disgusting and, un and unacceptable. Like my fellow panelists, I went to school where it was considered acceptable to be uh, hit by teachers. But we all know what kind of impact it created, not just on us, but generations of children. And I'm really glad that social media took this viral and brought this to light. I think we need to start by recognizing that a child and possibly children's rights have been violated here. I'm talking about the right to equality, the right against discrimination, the right to equality of opportunity for that matter, as well as due process of law, and of course, the right to quality education. Schools are our places, our places to learn, and they don't happen independent of what's happening in society. Many times they actually reflect the biases that we have in society, the cultural uh, biases that we have. And I'm not just talking religion here. I think we need to keep that aside. I'm talking about what we believe is the purpose of education. What do we? What is our understanding of discipline? How to motivate children? Do teachers even believe that children, that every child can learn and deserves a, a, a life of dignity? So I think this goes beyond just this one incident. And we could well make this yesterday's news and forget about it. But as an educator, I hope and pray that we use this as an opportunity to learn. Look at the harm that has been created to this child, even to the children who were encouraged by the teacher to come up and hit one of their classmates. What impact is it going to have on them? What impact is this having on the families? Now, as much as we want to demonize the teacher, and trust me, I want to do that too, I think we should also look at why did she do this? Why did she think it was okay to do this? And use this as an opportunity to basically create more awareness about the vision for education in India. Mm. NEP talks about how we want to provide quality education to all, lifelong opportunities to all. They talk about making school a safe place. Mm. Start with your teachers. Start with your school leaders. Mm. Who are the kind of people we're recruiting? What is their mm. mindset? And, and what are we doing in terms Important point of... point that you make there because... Sorry, go ahead, please. In, 
important point that you're making there, Nurain, it's about mindsets. And as parents, several of us may have made our mistakes as well in this process, not learning mm -hmm. because we come from generational, uh, uh, you know, there is a generational baggage, if I can call it, that we carry it. I'm a, as a parent myself, I've made mistakes. Uh, Dr. Arti, when it comes to a child's psyche, uh, you know, we are being told by the child and the parent now that the child is not able to sleep. This is an eight-year-old child. Uh, I mean, it must be heartbreaking to listen to such children and the trauma that they've gone through. Obviously, as we pointed out, this is well known and this case has come to light. But then you must be meeting hundreds of children uh, who can't tell their story to the rest of the world. It's true. It's very traumatic. And also, it comes under what's called technically the adverse childhood experience. Something that changes the child for life. And like, like you uh, mentioned earlier in the clip, the parent was uh, talking about his own trauma of having to, you know, uh, look at a child and not reach them. And I think at some point, like both my panelists mentioned, it's not about one person. It's about an entire system that requires to be looked at from the eyes of a child. Education needs to be looked at from the eyes of a child and discipline needs to be looked at uh, from the eyes of a child because punishment can never change behavior. The moment we acknowledge that, we will first understand that a classroom is a place where relationships are built, not broken. Secondly, control can never bring about learning. It can only make children traumatized and it's not going to help them get very far in life. And the most important aspect about this whole thing is that we talk about this when an incident happens, when it comes into social media or when it becomes viral like this. But I think it has to go back to our teacher training institutes, which do not actually teach teachers how to work with children. And I know my fellow panelists will agree with me when they actually, uh, one of them is a school uh, head as well. I'm sure that she actually has to reject a lot of people on an everyday basis just because they do not know the relational aspect of working within a classroom. So yes, trauma is something that we underplay many times, but we shouldn't do this. And may this be the last incident that we need to talk about. A quick advice, doctor, from you before I go back to Dr. Singh, as well as Nurain, a quick bit of advice to you. As parents, we all learn the lesson. As I pointed out, there were incidents and lessons that we learned to say that this is not okay uh, if somebody is watching or if somebody has realized that this is gone whether you're a parent or a teacher what should they do to repair is it possible to address it and remedy the damage that may have been done see one loving adult can always make a difference but we need to first understand might is never right and we need to differentiate between what's an error a mistake and a crime even in a crime Punishment does not help change a person. An error is when a child does not have a knowledge and doesn't have the intention. A mistake is when the child has the knowledge but does not have the intention. A crime is when the child has knowledge and intention. But in this particular case, the teacher did not look at error, mistake or crime. She looked at only shaming the child. And that shaming. is traumatic for the child. And I think we need to take it seriously. Dr. Singh, your prescription in this case, and I'm asking this because I don't want to see this, the same yardstick that we want to use on our children, I want to use on the teacher as well. Not as a crime and punishment, but as a message to the rest of the society and for teachers across that this is not okay. What should be done? What can the police do now? Absolutely. We should get away from the syndrome of lofty ideals, but lowly conduct. The police have sworn to establishing the rule of law and the constitutional propriety but in this case and many others that i know of which are not in public domain but yes the police have failed the victim and the police have also failed the parents therefore the proper training and also giving a message of zero tolerance this kind of miscarriage of justice and also the trauma to a family and to the child this should be taken at the highest level and given the topmost priority and not at the most bottom uh, priority of the policing and yes, every investigation should be put, not only in the past check code, but also ensured the due counselling is given to one and everyone that the society and the nation cannot suffer such teachers and such ecosystems in education. 
fantastic point that you make there. I, I must underline to all our viewers that this is not about this one child, but about hundreds or thousands of children who are going through corporal punishment, physical uh, punishments uh, in cases for their discipline, but are not able to come out. Nurain Fasal, what would your advice be? And what do you think should be done with the teacher and with the child as an educator? The last word to you, Nurain. Uh, I think actually this should be a conversation which should be facilitated by people who understand child behavior, child psychology, uh, as well as somebody who could bring people together who is an expert in conflict resolution. Because I think it's important to prevent. This is not just this one incident. This is going to be having a ripple effect across the length and breadth of India. So I would say understand why the teacher did this. Use this as a case study. Use this as an opportunity not to demonize this teacher, but to teach teachers how to motivate children to do their homework. Have a conversation with the child. Why didn't the child do the homework? Maybe the child didn't understand what is happening. Maybe there's some trauma happening at home. Right? So you have to understand that perspective. And in terms of teachers, I mean, you asked me a question, a fellow panelist said it must be difficult. You know, for 100 positions, we had 10,000 vacancies. Uh, sorry, 10,000 applicants for 100 vacancies in our school. And we still didn't find the teachers we need because it comes down to philosophy of education. Okay. It, it comes down to their understanding of discipline, uh, understanding of what motivates a child okay. to learn. So we really need to build capacity okay. across the system. All right. Uh, Nurain, thanks for that point. Dr. Arti, I want to give the last word to you. Uh, my producer is just asking a very uh, important question. Will the child be able to be friends again? Uh, how long will it take for him to recover from this? A and B, often in urban elite circles, we talk about all this and there is a reform that goes on on how it's not okay. How do we take that same message that it's not okay to the length and breadth of this country to the poorest of the poor and uh, every other uh, government school in this country? A lot of my work is in the villages of India and therefore we have been able to do it in many, many places. Uh, I'm from Tamil Nadu and we work very, very extensively with village schools as well. But your other question about will the child ever come back? Children in the presence of a loving adult and a supportive ecosystem are usually able to bounce back. How much we may never be able to gauge because the kind of trauma that's been inflicted on the child is quite high. But uh, having said that, I've never underestimated the power of a loving family. And I think in this case, the parents can be supported to be able to help this child through this period. And it's going to be difficult, but it's not impossible. Thank you so much, doctor. Important message. It's not punishment, but love that can heal uh, in cases like this. Uh, thank you, all three of you, for joining us. Dr. Vikram Singh, Nurain Fasal as well. Uh, very important points and thoughts uh, that you've shared here on this uh, very disturbing incident from Uttar Pradesh.